Hello and welcome to this class where we are talking about international human resource management and within that today we would be looking at some of the differences between domestic and international human resource management. Well, human resource management functions remain the same whether it is domestic or international. What are some of the functions? You have your manpower planning, you have recruitment, hiring the best talent that is available in the industry. You need to provide training and development to all the employees to ensure that they're up to the mark all the time. You need to upskill them. You also need to compensate them well. It has to be a competitive, robust compensation and benefit package that you have in your organization if you need to retain your employees. You need to have regular performance evaluation feedback. You have to motivate and maintain these employees, ensure that these employees are satisfied. Whether it is domestic or global, these are some of the tasks of any human resource management team. External environmental factors like the political, legal, economic, cultural factors definitely play a major role whether it is domestic or international. When you're talking of domestic, you are talking of all these factors within a country. And when you're talking of international, you're talking of all these factors in different countries and the level of complexity and the tasks involved obviously will increase for a human resource management team. The usual tasks remain the same, but when you're talking of international or global human resource management, you're talking of these complexities that come with regard to working in different countries. And it is your responsibility to ensure that you retain and um, manage different categories of employees from different countries. There are about six factors that have been identified that contribute to the complexity of international human resource management. One, there's definitely more HR activities involved. Yes, of course, there's so much already on the plate of a human resource management team, especially if they are a lean team. You have to ensure that you have proper work manpower planning happening, you are hiring the best resources, you are training them, compensating them well, motivating them. And on top of that, when you're talking of international human resource management, you are also talking of the complexities of the political, legal, economic structures or the cultural uh, environment of different uh, countries. And because of that very same reason, you need to have a broader perspective you cannot think of just that country, you cannot just have a narrow mindset. The, the human resource management team needs to have a broader perspective of how things can happen because there are different countries involved. The things that are done in a certain way in a country might be done in a different way in a country and so they have to be willing to adapt and adjust according to the culture of that other country. One very key factor that is part of international human resource management is that there is a greater involvement in the personal lives of employees when it comes to international human resource management. We will definitely be learning more about that as we progress along this module. The area of emphasizing changes as the workforce is a mix of expatriates and locals. Some countries might want more of their locals to be involved in the workforce. Some countries might have more expatriates because these resources are not available in that organization so, or in that country. So the complexities differ depending on how the work environment is in that country. There's definitely a lot of risk involved but then there is risk involved in any kind of work. But when it comes to this it is very important that the team does manage to keep the company or the employees together by minimizing those risks. There are broader external influences, there are some things that are probably totally out of your control, but you need to learn to manage those issues. More HR activities, we're looking at it in detail now. When a company becomes international in its operations, the human resource department needs to engage in a number of activities. Special attention has to be given to multinational enterprises 
uh, to design tax equalization policies. The tax structures are very different in different countries and so when you're designing the compensation packet, you have to ensure that you are taking into consideration these tax equalization policies also. You need to manage international location of these employees. If you are relocating employees to a different subsidiary, you have to manage international relocation and that, ex that is expensive. And you have to get involved, the team has to get involved in government relationships with the host country. You need to have a broader perspective. Of course, your policies need to be revamped to ensure that you have an international perspective. The expatriate compensation and benefit plans must ensure that the expatriates are happy and they are able to live a good life in the country that they are being relocated to. A greater involvement in personal life, like I told you, the HR department plays a very limited role in the domestic arena, but when it comes to international settings, HR departments have to be more involved in the personal lives of these employees because they need to be fully knowledgeable about all the aspects of expatriate benefits offered for international assignments. Areas of emphasis changes as the workforce mix of expatriates and locals vary. The importance is given to different human res resource activities and these also need to change. The transfer of employees from home country th to the host country is reduced if you can take in workforce from the host country. And more funds can be divert diverted to activities like recruitment training and development of local staff. And so there has to be a change in the way that policies are formulated in the team. Risk exposure, of course, there are more severe consequences when you are failing in the international arena and the magnitude of financial and human resources would definitely be really high. So the risk, the cost of failure is definitely high when it comes to international human resource management. And um, the, it involves a lot of cost to the company when you are there's a failure in recruiting the right expatriates or failure in retaining these expatriates in those host countries. Broader influences that affect a high HRM would be the type of government, the nature of the economy, the accepted practices of conducting business in different countries are different. And the hiring procedures also might be different in these different countries. And so these are the gamut of factors that you need to consider in international human resource management. Thank you.